Big, big shout out for Amazon Lit. What's up, everybody? Top of the morning. How we doing tonight? How we doing tonight? Excited to be here. Say hi. Hi. Awesome. Fantastic. Hey, who went out last night? I see a lot of familiar faces. And correct me if I'm wrong, I saw on a group chat, I'm not going to say where, but I think someone was throwing up maybe over the ledge. Did that happen? Oh, don't, oh, we don't got to point them out. We don't got to point them out. So, for anybody who doesn't know who I am or we are, my name is Eric Castellano. And I'm Sebastian Swick. And we are the owners and founders of Amazon Lit. We operate our own very large Amazon business, which we're going to get into in a couple minutes. And we also help people just like you transition from side hustles to full-time legitimate incomes and making profitable businesses out of what you're doing. That's the name of the game for us. So real quick, I want to just gauge the room. Who is, uh, just show of hands, and who's doing between $1,000 and $10,000 a month on Amazon right now? Okay. Taylor, I see you got your girl selling on Amazon now, too. <laughs> All right, what about 10,000 10, to 50,000 a month? Okay. 50,000 to 100,000. Okay. 100,000 to 500,000 a month. Okay. 500,000 to a million a month. Okay. Wait, well, put your hands real high, the 500 to a million people. I want to. Okay. Let's see, does your hand stay up? A million to two million? Okay, we gotta get you there. We gotta get you there. Um, now, who's never sold on Amazon before and just came to this event, like, I'm gonna show up here and, nobody? Oh, back there, Rose, right? Welcome, Rose. You're the most important person in this room. Everybody give Rose a round of applause. All right? Man, I know how uncomfortable I was at my first event. We're ready. We're ready. You ready to get rocking here, my friend? Yes, let's do it. Awesome. All right, so the name of the game today here is Systems to Success, right? Because what's going to allow you to go from 10K a month to 50K a month to 100K to pumping out numbers like Javier, pumping out numbers like us where you're doing five, six million a month, it's all about your systems, right? That's what's going to allow you to succeed. So we're going to cover that in thorough detail today. And please take notes on your phone, on your pad, right? Action takers or note takers, you know? So, and, and when you pay, you pay attention. And you all paid to be here, so pay attention. Mm -hmm. Super important what we're going to cover today. So basically anything is possible with systems. And just a show of hands, who here in their business has written systems? Documented that they share with their employees or even with themselves so when they're going through processes, they follow through, right? Awesome, awesome. It's the name of the game and it's the only way to scale. So anything that you do more than once any redundancies in your business or your life could be replaced with systems, and then those systems can be used by others so that you could allocate more time to growing other areas of your life and business. Yeah. This is the reason Eric and myself are here right now. While our business is selling products, there's people in our warehouse right now on a Saturday packaging goods, yeah. and we could not be there for months at a time. Matter of fact, we're not there probably about six months out of the year because we're traveling and yet our business grows. Consistently, right? So it's like the difference between being a, a business operator, right, where you're in the day-to-day, -day, and being a business owner. You know, there's a huge difference there. It's like when you're inside of the box, you're, you're an operator. You're in the day-to-day, -day, you're moving around. And don't get me wrong, I love the day-to-day. -day. I thrive in the day-to-day. -day. I try to be at the Amazon company as much as possible because it just motivates me and elevates me to a whole different mindset. But it's cool to be able to step out of that box right? It's super important. Time freedom. Taylor and Roma were talking about it before, spending time with your family. Like those are the things that matter. And if you're in your business, 
You know, 60, 70 hours a week, you don't have that time freedom. But in the beginning, you have to put in that work. You have to grind it out. Those 60, 70 hour weeks are what's going to allow you to scale. So it's a fine balance of putting that stuff together. You know, and for anybody who doesn't know what, what we're here to talk about, we're here to talk about Amazon, right? And it's a very, very simple process. You source the products, you ship the products to Amazon, it's a scalable business model, and you rinse, wash, and repeat, right? It's you find profitable inventory, you get it into Amazon, you reprice it accordingly, you reanalyze the products to make sure that it's profitable, you reorder them if it's working, you don't order them if it's not, and you keep growing. It's so, so simple, but there's a lot of little in-betweens we all know, right? If it was so simple, everybody in the world would be doing it. I get people who reach out to me all the time, like, Eric, I got $200,000. How can I build a massive business? It's like, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, like, you start growing, and you have 2x, 4x, 6x, 10x growth, and so we become complacent. We think we're hustling and working hard because we see this growth, but in actuality, we're becoming complacent to where we are and not really writing down the processes and what we're doing on a daily basis so we can understand how we can optimize it. Because when things progress, we think we're at the optimal way of doing it, but really we need to step back and refocus and see how every single piece and component of our day-to-day -day can be optimized. And for anybody who's not following us on the socials, here they are, Amazon Lit on Instagram, and same thing on YouTube, Google, anywhere, TikTok, all of it. All of it's the same. So we, we pump out tons of content, free content to help all of you grow your business very consistently. Who's following us already? Okay, everybody. Who's not? This is a better question. Who's not following us? Okay, so, so soon uh, all those hands will go up. Grab your phones. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about our story from a basement to a half billion dollars. You know, by the end of this year, we'll sell about a half billion dollars on Amazon. A billion with a B. It's a lot of money, my friends. It's a lot of money. So this is a little bit about our journey. Um, and here is... Last year. Yeah, last year. It's got a little January and February in there, but we do about $63, $65 million a year. This is the last two years, $115 million. We shipped about five, uh, a little, almost six million orders. That's a lot of orders. You know, in our warehouse, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, on average daily production, we produce about, what are we at, 12,000? 12 12 15. Yeah, 12 to 15,000 FBA orders a day. Our business is 100% FBA. We made that decision because of the scale we're at, right? For a lot of you, you want to have an assortment of FBA and FBM. That's what's going to drive growth in the beginning. But for us, it just doesn't make sense. We pulled those people away from our FBM stations, put them on an FBA station, and they 5X their daily production. So, so talk about the first place, this, this is where it all started in a small little uh, home. If anyone follows us, you know Humble Ted. Uh, we were renting this house from him. It was a second investment home he had. And, uh, you know, this is where we learned about Amazon and decided that we were going to shoot it out and uh, try, try our luck with it, right? We, we had nothing to lose. Many of you may be in the same position where you're working paycheck to paycheck, working for someone else, and you just want to see if there's an opportunity elsewhere. This is where we were, and this is where it began. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of you doing this right now, right? Like these things probably look very familiar to you. Small little basement or, or, or garage or living room, lugging boxes up and down into the minivan or whatever you're using. Sometimes probably even getting U-Hauls, getting the UPS driver to come pick stuff up. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a hustle. It's a hustle, and shout out to all of you for putting that work in, because it is not easy, right? It's absolutely not easy. It takes a lot of effort to do that. And this is the basement, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, the, co the cousin was living here, Humble Ted's son, and uh, he was in a frat, and so they did that. We did not do that. We brought the products in. The walls were done by someone else, so. <laughs> When, when Sebastian, one day I called Sebastian about eight or nine years ago, I was broken, you know, I was uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol, I had absolutely no, no opportunity in my life, and I called Sebastian, I asked him if I could sleep on his couch one night, I've known Sebastian for what, two decades now? That's my bestie right there, and uh, I'm going to get emotional, um, and, and Sebastian said, sure, you, you're welcome to sleep on my couch, and uh, he brought me in his basement, and he showed me this, and I said, bro, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> And he's like, I'm selling products on Amazon. And I was like, no way. You know, I just didn't, I wrote it off. And then a couple months later, I ended up working for him in a warehouse or 
and, and it just expanded from there. You know, it's that, that moment that just clicks. We've all had it before. And some of you haven't had it. You'll have it very soon. But you have to be aware and present in the moment to understand that it's happening. And sometimes you won't realize that it's happening in the moment. You'll realize it later on and look back in retrospect and you'll be like, holy shit, that's the moment that changed my life. And I'm hoping and I'm praying and I know for a fact that a lot of you are going to have that moment right here in this room today. Right? So let's talk a little bit about the switch, Sebastian. Yeah, and um, you know, Eric touched on what he said, and you might hear a lot of it as well, is friends and family are gonna think you're crazy when you're starting off. I, like Taylor, uh, had nobody at that point that was doing anything online. So when I was lugging boxes up, every one of my friends were like, wasting time, you know? Wasting time, uh, you know, I, I just, don't listen. Thank goodness I'm a stubborn Polak, and uh, I didn't listen, I kept going. You know, and, uh, you know, this is the fruit of our labors and this is where we are today. So when you leave here is really when the work starts happening. You're going to take a lot of information in today from a lot of people. But if you don't take action, every day that goes by, less opportunity for that ROI. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of, of retail arbitrage, right? Yep. This is where we started. We started by going to uh, clubs like Sam's Club and uh, Costco and purchasing products Actually, part of the reason that today Costco and Sam's Club has limits on products is because of us, so I apologize. Uh, He's not joking. I'm not joking. Uh, ten, ten years ago, they had no limits, so we would go in and buy pallets at a time. If, if they had them in the racks, make them pull them down and take them all. Uh, so the manufacturers had to set limits. Yeah. Um, that was good, but you know, it was difficult because you know, even if you rented, even when we rented a U-Haul and we purchased those goods and we brought them back to the warehouse or back to the basement at the time, it was a lot of time. The amount of time we put in equaled the amount of profit we could make. So it was all time allocation. And due to that, it was difficult to scale. Yeah. It was really difficult to scale. And so we knew there had to be a better way and that's when we found out the opportunities in wholesale and went to our first trade show because what we're always preaching is relationships. You can't do this by yourself. And the people who have other businesses, your distributors, suppliers, wholesalers, are entrepreneurs just like you who they too want to scale their business. So when you bring two together, you multiply the ROI. Yeah. And, and so we're going to dive into a little bit about like the difference between a hustler, which a lot of, first of all, you need a hustler mentality to be an entrepreneur, but there's a big difference between being a hustler stuck in the day-to-day -day grind, going to 50 RA stores, scanning books at book sales. And like, that's the hustler, right? But we want to switch your hustler into the full fledged entrepreneur who wants to be like a full fledged business owner out of the day to day grind, right? Where you're, where you have systems in place to be able to scale to that next level. Awesome. And we'll save that for later. <laughs> right? So a hustler, you got no long-term vision. It's essentially a car salesman salesman. Sebastian, you explained this the other day, you gave me a great metaphor with the car salesman. You want to share that with everybody? Yeah. So a car salesman is a hustler. That, that's what he is or she is. What they're trying to do is they found a way to make profit, make a living, take care of their family, and so that's what they're doing. While the person who owns the car dealership, he's put systems in place. And the better your systems are, the more hustlers you can attract. You can attract people that are like-minded like you that want to grow business, want to take care of their family, but maybe don't want to take the risk. So you put the systems in place so it's reduces, mitigates that risk for them, but yet the profit's still there. This is how we have such a strong buying team. This is how we have such strong management where Eric and I, literally for half the year, we're not there and the business continues to grow. It's all about the systems. Yeah, so the, the goal is to essentially evolve and convert your hustler mentality with systems to be a full-fledged entrepreneur, right? That's the goal here.
That's what we're trying to instill in your brains, right? It might not happen tomorrow, might not happen next month, but I guarantee you if you continue to work at it, it will happen over time and you'll be able to build that A1 team that you've been looking for, right? Those people who rely on you for that paycheck and that's super important to us. We have a very high retention rate at our company. Some people have been with us for six, seven years. They bring their cousins, their sisters, their uncles to work for us because we treat them well. We provide them with benefits, right? Right? They are people with families. That's super important. Take care of your team. You know, bonus incentives, like all of that, right? Take care of them. Parties, like make sure that they feel appreciated. It is key. And if it's just your one employee or you got 15, doesn't matter. Take care of them. Yeah, even if you're starting off, let's say, you know, obviously early days we couldn't do that. So maybe it was a pizza party every Friday. You know, maybe it was bringing in bagels and donuts in the morning. Or if you have VAs, you know, we, we offer our VAs monitors, additional monitors. They're super grateful for that. Uh, we give them compensation to get a, a larger desk. You know, sometimes they take pictures of these tiny desks they're trying to work on. They, they appreciate that and they work harder because of it. Yeah. And this is warehouse number one for us. This was a thousand square feet. This is where I started working at Sebastian's business. He put me to work at a, at a, as a packer. I put, so, I put together so many fabuloso pallets. <laughs> Jesus. And then we didn't have any systems, so I would miss a pallet, and I'd have to break down. I think it was 126 units on a pallet. I'd break down the whole pallet to find that one missing sticker. When I didn't understand that the time to break down the pallet, like, just send that shit. You know, it's like it's a it's a four dollar bottle of Fabuloso. I just spent 45 minutes breaking down the pallet. Me and his cousin Nina. It was a nightmare. You know, this is where we started sending LTL shipments. You did about three million dollars out of this warehouse. First warehouse. And this is warehouse number two, which we moved into next. Yep, that was about 2,000 square feet. And then we knocked down a wall right here, and we moved into three, which brought us to? 5,000. And then we knocked down another wall, and we moved into four, which brought us to? Total about 12 to 13,000. 12 to 13,000. So this is how it looked, right? These are trucks at our warehouse. We had three bay doors. The shipments would get dropped off here. We would, actually this side, we would bring them down to the production stations, which were up there. We had at the time, what, three production stations? We did, yeah. Yeah, so we had three production stations, four or five employees on each producing our inventory. We'd bring the pallets in, they would get fully packaged and produced, and we'd whip them down here and boom, load them right onto a truck. They'd be out of our warehouse in 72 hours. Efficiency. Efficiency. And we still live by that motto. In this place, we learned a lot about infrastructure in our company. It, we, we started paying for mentors and looking for people who operated bigger businesses than us to teach us how to do it because... We didn't know shit about that. And just to touch on that, Eric was telling you all about these efficiencies. But really, before we got into four, when it was just three and two, it was just random tables. So like over here, you'd have the guys playing country music. Over here would be a couple ladies playing some R&B. Then you'd have down here rap being okay. played. And it was just no systems in place. It was just like, come get your stickers and just sticker and come back when you're ready. Whenever you're ready, just come back. <laughs> It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. You know, you had the bachata in the one corner. It was crazy. And uh, this is the, the place we moved into about four years ago, right? Or five now. Five years. Uh, this is where we moved in five years. And this was 20,000 square feet. And yesterday, we just signed a lease on a new space that's 35,000 square feet. Woo! Yeah. So our lease is up here on March 1st. And a lot of you are looking at this and thinking it's impossible. And you're right, it is impossible. It's impossible to do it on your own. You need a team to be able to do that. You need a team to be able to get places like this. You need a team to be able to fill places like this. You can't do it by yourself. You know, that ego gets in the way though. 